where we're joined now by Carolyn Mercer, who is a retired head teacher and conversion therapy survivor. Thank you so much for joining us this evening, Carolyn. Can you explain to us what the the process of having conversion therapy was like for you? Yes, and it's important, Natasha, to say that my experience was many years ago and that type of conversion practice rather than conversion therapy because it's not therapy Mm. and I'm quite happy to discuss your concerns and how you make a difference uh, in a moment or two but but currently for example so-called conversion therapy involves verbal psychological physical sexual abuse um, including rape It it might look like being prayed over or exercised, being made to eat or drink something to cleanse or purify you. And it might look like someone controlling you to limit your movement or contact with others. So in terms of the type of experience that I had, it's not there anymore, fortunately. But the effects of so-called conversion therapy or conversion practice is just the same. So my experience was when I was 17, 18 years old. So going back to 1964 Mm. and the treatment under the NHS at that time was that I was strapped to a wooden chair, electrodes placed on my arm after being soaked in brine and pictures of women projected onto the wall in front of me. And the idea was to make me associate pain with who I saw myself as being, who I wanted to be. And and from time to time, they would change the picture, change the picture, and then throw the switch, whereby the electric current passed through my arm, my hand shot up in the air. But of course, nothing else could move because I was strapped to the chair. And that, that continued. Um, burst into tears and the psychiatrist said why are you crying and I simply said because it hurts now now what happened was that for the next 40 years of my life every time I thought about that particular treatment I physically shivered Mm. now 40 years of that but but even more long lasting was the feeling that I wasn't normal that I wasn't worthwhile because it wasn't just one aspect of me that was being criticised. It was the whole of me. So even now, I'm 74, even now I can't feel positive emotions in the way that other people seem to feel it because of that self-hatred. I've only ever hated one person in my life and that's myself. Um, and, And that over a period of time, of course, I contemplated suicide and, and attempted suicide. And what a waste that would have been. Um, but I've, I've come through it, survived and professionally succeeded. Carolyn, I'm so sorry to hear that you went through that. What a horrific experience to have. And thank you so much for being brave enough to share that with us. I... It struck me as you were talking that the government seemed to be so focused on what they wouldn't be allowing young trans or gender questioning people to do by banning conversion therapy than what would be allowed to potentially be be perpetrated against these people. I mean, if you had to, to describe to them what differentiates the practice of this kind of conversion torture from therapy where you might be discussing some kind of confusion about your gender or your sexuality and ultimately arrive at the conclusion that you are straight or not trans. What would you say to them? I I had many years of that after the uh, conversion practice that I've just described. And and it's clear to me that it's the intended outcome Mm. that is important. So, for example, if any therapist starts from the premise that being lesbian, gay, bisexual, or trans is wrong, is not normal, is not natural, then that is not therapy. That is indoctrination and that is intended to cause harm. So, for example, looking at the words normal and natural, uh, normal, my subject was mathematics, so normal on a normal curve distribution covers 99.7% of the population. I am normal. 
natural. Well, I wear glasses for reading. Is that natural? <laughs> yeah. I have fillings in my teeth. Is that natural? It, it is natural in the same way that I'm also left-handed. And, and so-called conversion practices took place on left-handed people in my generation. They mm. had their hands tied to the side. They were hit with sticks to make them stop using their left hand. Now, we realize that being left-handed was not, as, as some religious bodies believed, evil, but it was really the devil inside you. We realized it was natural, and to stop it caused psychological and physical harm. Mm. Now, that's happening to trans people now. It happened to me all those years ago. I'm still suffering the effect. Please, 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 government, get it sorted. If, if you can define the difference as far as lesbian, gay, and bisexual people are concerned, you can define exactly the same difference with trans people.